Morning. It's Wednesday, January 5th. And tomorrow is a big day. It's the first anniversary of the insurrection. The first thing I have to tell you is that this rant was inspired by an article that I read that was written by Andy Borowitz, who writes satirical articles for the New Yorker magazine. So this article that I read by him gave me the the inspiration for this rant. So I want to talk to you about the, the problem that the Republicans are having. They are faced with a terrible situation because, you know, Marjorie Taylor Greene was their misinformation princess. She was on Twitter writing all kinds of misinformation about COVID-19 and Omicron and Delta. She was a wealth of misinformation. And now she has been suspended by Twitter permanently. Lifetime suspension. Not on her business account, because she doesn't give out much misinformation on her business account. Because I believe she doesn't understand the business that she's in, so it's very hard for her to generate some form of misinformation. But meanwhile, the Republican Party is desperate absolutely desperate to find a replacement for her to continue to give out misinformation. And it doesn't have to necessarily be a disinformation that continues with the COVID-19. It could be other forms of misinformation. And so they're looking desperately to find some people in the party, some congressman, some senator, to replace Marjorie Taylor Greene. So I went out and I looked. I figured I could give them some advice. And one of the guys I came up with was this congressman from Georgia, Andy Clyde. He would be perfect for misinformation, in my mind, anyhow. Because he's the gentleman that said that the January 6th event was nothing more than a normal tourist day at the Capitol. You know, people got a little excited, but it was a normal tourist day. She said, just look at the videos, you'll see how normal the tourist day was. Well, if that's a normal tourist day at the Capitol, the way he was explaining it, then there will be a lot of dead people in the Capitol, because they were running and hiding from these tourists who were carrying spears and everything, you know. And then, of course, you got Gosar, Paul Gosar, I believe his name is. Now, Gosar denies uh, planning anything about the Stop the Steal rally. That's what it was called, you know, Stop the Steal. But his office helped organize it and helped promote it. In fact, one of those guys, the guy who was dressed in with a with the horns and a spear. You know, he came from Arizona where Gosar is a congressman and Gosar helped that guy promote the rally. Apparently this guy Alexander was one of the prime planners. He wasn't a promoter, he was a planner of this rally and Gosar worked with him. So it makes perfectly good sense to me that Gosar should certainly be looked at to replace Taylor Green as a misinformation wizard. And then, of course, let's not forget about Rand Paul, the senator from Kentucky. He would be even more perfect than the rest of these guys because he claims to be a doctor, which he is. He's an ophthalmologist, an eye doctor, you know. But he claims he knows a lot about virology, too. So it's possible that he could be a really good promoter of misinformation for the Republican Party. But I don't know if he'd take the job, because he likes to fight with people too much. He's not prepared to sit out there and provide a spiel, so to speak, of misinformation. He likes to fight. You know, he's made a name for himself in the last couple of months fighting with Dr. Fauci over every little thing, you know. He's telling Fauci all the things that Fauci is saying incorrectly about the virus. Now, it's true that Fauci may have made a couple of statements early on before everybody really had a grip on the virus. But certainly, Rand Paul is no expert, so he'd be perfect to give out misinformation, you know. And then, of course, we have his cohort, Josh Hawley. Hawley was the one that was carrying on on January 6th, trying to rally the troops to kill the certification of President Biden. It was Josh Hawley that was 
standing up there and saying, we're not going to let this thing happen. But you know what happened during that whole episode? Many of the Republicans who thought they were going to stay there and thought they were going to find information about the fraud had to back down. So there were Republicans who was on one side of the fence early on, but then switched and voted for certification. So Josh Hawley didn't do a really good job. But I think he would be a perfect candidate for leading the misinformation. There are two senators that come to mind also, Lindsey Graham and Ted Cruz. I think both of them would be excellent for spreading misinformation. They do it on a regular basis. You can't trust either one of these guys. Because if you remember, when Donald Trump won the can to see, all of a sudden they changed their opinions of him all during the campaign, during the primaries, when they were trying to become the presidential candidate, they badmouthed Trump. They badmouthed Trump continually. Even after he became the candidate, they were not happy with him. So those two guys would be perfect for spreading in misinformation because they are known for changing their minds. So they'd be perfect to give out lots of misinformation. And don't forget, as soon as Trump became the president and the leader of the party, these two guys became loyal, loyal to him. That's the kind of people you need. You need people who are loyal to the party, who are willing to spread the misinformation. You can't have somebody who's liable to change their mind, although these guys did change their mind. But they'd be perfect as misinformation guys. You know, Ted Cruz took off like a shot for Cancun when the state of Texas lost all their electricity because of the floods and the poor planning. He took off to hide and get away from it. So he's got the sneaky disposition to give out misinformation. And in some way, shape, or form, he's well-educated. So a lot of people will believe the misinformation that he gives out. Now, I'm not sure Graham is in his class there. But nevertheless, Graham has a following too, you know. He has a soft-spoken manner, and he might be perfect to give out misinformation. So I think, all in all, the Republicans have a lot of possible candidates that they could find to be their dean of misinformation. And maybe they could have more than one working on Twitter. They might not be, you know, thrown off so fast. I mean, they could throw one off, but they'd deal with the other one. And there's a guy lurking in the background, Tom Cotton. I think he would be good, too. You know, he's off the wall a little bit also, but not quite in the class of these other guys. But he may, maybe he might do it. He ranks, uh, you know, a little bit of, you should pay attention. Look at him, too. I think I'm running out of candidates now, so I'll let you go. Have a great day. See you in the morning. Bye.